It's a fine day. It's a great day. It's a one of those days where I feel extraordinarily refreshed. In fact, I've got a lot to talk to you about, and I want to get right to it. First of all, don't know if you could tell, but I, I got new glasses. You may have noticed that the lens was popping out of the last pair of glasses that I had, and I tried to keep it together. My wife had taped it on. Anyway, I managed to get that fixed, so I feel newer, more refreshed, and more put together in that sense. Also, I have been doing a lot of you know, marketing type improvements and contemplating how I present myself, who I'm seeking out with this video blog in hope of uh, audience uh, ship, if you will. And so that's all quite exciting, and so I've been refining things. There are many things I want to talk to you about. I want to start with sharing an article I read, though. A very interesting article off of Medium.com by a gentleman who goes by the name Paul Cantor. Cantor? Paul Cantor? Paul Cantor? I'm not positive exactly how it's pronounced. It's disgusting outside. The temperature is nice. I guess it's probably 70 something, but the air is, and the humidity doesn't bother me, but it's buggy out, especially in East Windsor where there's a lot of trees and you feel like they're trapped in your vicinity. It's just not very pleasant. I couldn't continue walking. I couldn't finish my walk. This article is called, I got it off of medium.com by Paul Cantor, why talking is one of the greatest art forms. First of all, I agree. Secondly, I hope you'll check it out. By the way, Medium, really, the two websites that probably pop up the most when it comes to the research I do, medium.com and vox.com. So two websites I recommend for those of you who like to think critically and creatively. I'll talk more about that concept in a bit. Medium.com and Vox.com. Anyway, I marked down a few uh, quotes from this guy that I liked, Mr. Paul Cantor. He says, first of all, right, as the title says, why talking is one of the greatest art forms. And he says, I don't think I'm the only one who feels this way. I just think people are less conscious of how deeply in the throes of talking as art form, they really are. And he adds, you hear someone like Howard Stern on the radio. He's a pro at talking, he says. Yeah, I agree. I think that talking as an art in a lot of ways is like jam band music or jazz, something that is, has a highly improvisational element to it, but uh, if you really want to treat it as an art, you obviously do a lot of thought and preparation before you dive into it, right? So, for example, I do a lot of mind mapping and reading before I talk extemporaneously, if you will. Well, is there really any other kind of talking as opposed to extemporaneous? Well, you could talk um, as if you're reading from a script or from pure memory. So uh, yeah, extemporaneous is good, but um, I don't want to digress too much here. He also says, speaking, talking, conversation, these things are probably among the most creative, dynamic, and most importantly, popular art forms in existence right now. And he references TED Talks, he references college lectures, political candidates, podcasts, stand-up comedy, these kinds of things as evidence of the fact that indeed we're a society that rather enjoys listening to a good talk. That may be true. He certainly does a good job arguing about that. But it's, it's had me thinking a lot about my purposes and my goals and has prompted me to refine 
the way that I present this vlog a little bit, and I'm going to stop calling it a video diary. Though you could characterize, and this really starts a whole other complicated conversation, doesn't it, of genre and categorization and word definitions in a postmodern society or a society culture highly influenced by postmodernism breaking down conventional use of definitions perhaps um, but I'm gonna cease at this point from calling these vlogs video diaries and just call them vlogs maybe a talk vlog I'm still contemplating the right categorization and genre description point I'm just gonna call it a vlog my purpose really is just to talk to you my purpose is to talk to you about politics and philosophy and when I talk about these more development oriented things I place that in the realm of aesthetics because I believe aesthetics to be not just about uh, beauty but about productivity actually I believe that philosophy absolutely has a role in asking, you know, why do I produce what I produce? And so that's where I want to go with that. Plus, I also just frankly believe in transparency. Transparency to me and being conversational in tone, excruciatingly important to me. Why? Because I believe that talking down to somebody, lecturing at someone, inundating someone with information. Um, I believe that this is besides the point of what our ultimate purpose in life should be, which is just to live in a better world and enjoy a sense of community with each other. So, I mean, I'm really just trying to talk to you. That's, that's my goal, straightforward. I just wanna to talk to you about what's on my mind and my mind, as I best understand it, uh, is centered in the world of philosophy and politics. And I like philosophy because philosophy just incorporates so much. I was also adding a uh, reference to self, but the more and more I think about it, self, self-improvement and these concepts, I believe, apply to philosophy because it applies to the questions of ethics and how should I treat myself? How should I conceptualize myself? And I also believe in the realm of aesthetics. Again, what should I produce? To what degree should my productivity be an expression of myself? What does it mean to improve oneself? What does it mean to improve one's productivity? These are inherently philosophical to me. So to me, it seems redundant to go on about saying I talk about self when in fact self would necessarily have to do with uh, philosophy and even politics too because it's a question of to what degree policy ought to reflect a philosophy of self-interest versus interest in others. Correct me if you think I'm wrong there. So that's an interesting thing I wanted to talk to you about. Another thing is this, this is the big one. This is something I've had an extremely difficult time with, and that is the question of who is my audience? What is my niche audience? What is my target audience? That's been troubling me because I'm interested, you know, fundamentally in being universal. That is to say, I don't care who, I don't care uh, whether someone who was sort of my intended target audience stumbles across this vlog or not I'm in that sense I just I don't like to be an exclusive person at least with respect I mean I'm exclusive probably in terms of who I spent time with but that's chiefly because I'm a workaholic I don't know if I want to use the word workaholic because that might imply that I am like destructive to the degree which I like to work but I should say I like to work. I like to spend most of my time working and therefore I just don't really spend time hanging out with random people, so to speak. But 
I, I would have to confess that there probably is a likelihood that there are people I would have to suspect might be more inclined than others to enjoy or find some value in my vlog and that's what I've been putting a lot of thought into and finally have um, more comment on and that is this uh, and you'll read it on my website and or blog doesn't matter which one we technically call it I'll let you tell me that one I don't I don't know um, but I'm out there I suppose if I've got to pick a target audience it is creative and critical thinkers I was very concerned that this was either gonna sound too ambiguous or that it was gonna sound pretentious and I had to ask myself is it why or why not and I could only deduce at the end of the day that it's not pretentious to characterize any particular person as trying to think creatively because that's more of an objective impersonal descriptor right you're either trying to spend a little bit of time contemplating what's outside the box of the world around you or you're not so in that sense I am seeking out people who would find conventional vlogs and conventional media and conventional art and conventional literature and conventional radio etc all to be kind of not necessarily bad or good that's like another conversation but that people are constantly seeking out something just a little bit different from the already existing paradigms and formulas and approaches if that makes sense that's just how I do it's just the way I think so I would of course uh, seek out like-minded thinkers in that respect and additionally I seek out critical thinkers critical to, to characterize someone as a critical thinker that too could come across as pretentious or snobby or arrogant but my intent with the term use of the term is not uh, that's not my purpose rather I do think that there are people who probably take greater interest in you know contemplating things and not just contemplating them in a kind of robotic routine way not just in a sort of unchecked unscrutinized stream of consciousness or people who don't just judge something by what they see on the surface right but people who really are uh, curious about the context surrounding the things in life that they find themselves subjected to around alerted by or informed of and so that's my approach